What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Live Fridays with the Traveling Tennis Coach. Again, a platform I use to interview coaches, pro players, tennis enthusiasts, you name it. By trade, my name is Chris Clark, former college tennis player, tennis pro, and good old-fashioned tennis enthusiast. I couldn't be more excited to welcome in our guest today all the way from Croatia. Her name is Marina. She is a WTA player. She has a career high of 483 as well as she has 12 ITF titles to her name. But more importantly, she is just has a great overall or overall um, profile. So she'll be jumping on here shortly. Um, as always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section and we we'll, we're gonna get started. Give it a second. Come back in. Hey, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. That's an amazing background you have. Yeah, we have a nice weather here in Croatia. Yeah, yeah. I'm not so lucky in the in the states, but I have a tennis court that I can see outside of my building, which which makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> so again, thanks for the time, and I really appreciate you you joining and jumping on with me. One of the things that I'm trying to do is just create this network and of people that I interview and stay close to the game of tennis as possible. So um, of course I came across your great profile and all the things you do, not only on the court, but off the court. And I thought it'd be great to just spend some time interviewing you and, and getting to know your, your backstory. Yes, exactly. Perfect. So where do we begin? Yeah, absolutely. So I would love for you to just tell everybody listening your background as it relates to tennis, how you got into the sport, and just where that love for it comes from. Yeah, so it all started when I was eight, eight years old. Um, uh, back then, I was living in Germany because my father was a football uh, player in Germany, in uh, Fortuna Düsseldorf. And I was living there since I was born. So I was uh, born in Croatia, but uh, straight I went to Germany uh, because uh, of my dad and he was uh, playing there. I was there for the first grade. And when I came back, uh, I have older sister. And, uh, she was more time living here in Croatia with uh, my grandparents. And she was practicing. So my grandfather took me to the first lesson of tennis because I was kind of jealous of my sister. That she... <laughs> so I wanted, I wanted so badly to do as well as, as her. And yeah, it all started really fast. Uh, in just two months, I passed all the like beginners group. And uh, I came to, uh, to a level that I was practicing with, uh, with kids that are already playing like tournaments, like under 10, under 12. Yeah. So it started pretty fast. My okay. coach, coach said that I was great talent, like as a kid. <laughs> And then as a kid, were you always, you know, eyeing the WTA tour, like I wanted to be a professional tennis player, or was it just something that kind of happened by you focusing on the day-to-day -day process? I think like every kid that is like in some sport, they, they want to be like the best. And they, they are dreaming like the, the biggest goals, like to be number one, to Grand Slam. And, and like they have players that they are really doing the same sport, but there is not alive anymore. And uh, we have actually one picture together where I'm, uh, I'm posing with the plate. It's like it was one birthday and I'm posing with the plate like the Wimbledon plate. So ah. it was always my dream and then his dream because he was every, every tournament that was like uh, close to, to our home or like in Croatia. He was like supporting me and uh, going with me. So, yeah. He was my big support and of course I was like dreaming to to play on Grand Slams to to be number one like I think it's like the greatest motivation that you can have absolutely absolutely and then as far as as we look at COVID right and I think you know tennis has kind of been taken away from us all is slowly starting to come back how has this transition in this period of uncertain or uncertainty been for you have you found, you know, a lot of relaxation or have you found different ways to train? How have you stayed positive? Uh, when, uh, when ITF canceled all the tournaments, I was basically laying on the track field. I was done with my fitness session okay. and my phone and I saw like 10 
messages from different people who were actually going at the same tournament as I should, like to Cairo. And uh, I saw it was cancelled and that they postponed everything by the, I think, 1st May. It was 1st May. And uh, yeah, and then thank God I didn't buy tickets. <laughs> yeah. But it was actually like when you are in professional sport, you cannot give yourself, I think, so much time to, to relax. Like you are always trying to stay in shape because you never know when they can say like, yeah, we are getting back like in two weeks, you know, like everything can happen so fast. So I, I thank, thank God I, I had permission uh, from the Olympic uh, Association that I can practice one hour uh, outside. I had the paper. Yeah, uh, and from police also. So I was practicing one hour uh, outdoor at the tennis court. And the other part of practice was a fitness session at my home. So, so I managed to survive these two months somehow. So I was actually really pumped and every practice I was giving even more than when we are preparing for tournaments. So it's it just... it actually like, I think this COVID gave us like more motivation and showed us like that we should appreciate more uh, our time uh, at the court. Yeah, I love that because I think for me, COVID as a coach, as a player has given me like a greater appreciation for tennis because you didn't, you never thought it would come to a point where it's just taken away from you and being back yeah, on the court, being able to train, being able to teach, whatever it is, you just have a greater appreciation for the sport. Another thing I personally think is that the sport may grow because people are concerned about social distancing and tennis is a social distancing sport. So I think it's going to be a great summer for me for lessons and things like that from that perspective. But for you and just being a pro, it's, it's pretty great that you've been able to stay positive during this time um, and continue to train because I know a lot of people haven't been as fortunate. So yeah. and it could wear on you mentally. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. And mentally, me also, like, it's, I, let's say I grew mentally from all this, let's say like that. And you, you appreciate more your time, family also. And you see that, uh, that material things in life are not the most important ones. And that's a, that's a big one because, you know, in the past I've been concerned with, cool clothes and shoes and, and looking good and going to work, whatever. But now that you're in the house most of the day, one, you save a lot of money, but two, you realize a lot of those things don't matter as you once thought they did. And you start to appreciate the, the little things, which is cooking at home, stretching at home, doing yoga at home, training at home, whatever that may be, you know, not going to the gym, but doing a hundred pushups or a hundred sit-ups or a hundred squats, something like that. Yeah, that's true. I did a lot of cooking, actually. I, I baked uh, some cake. Like, I love to cook. It relaxes me. Like, yeah. even when I'm on tournament, if I have, like, let's say, apartment or if we are not in the hotel, I always try to, to cook. It relaxes me. Even between, like, sessions from singles to doubles, I, I prepare lunch, so. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Um, so one of the things I'm always curious about, especially when I'm interviewing professional athletes, like, as you think about your best memories, whether it's on the WTA or as a kid playing tennis, what's the well, one story that you have that comes to mind for yourself? So first, um, I would say, like, it's, it's not kind of a happy memory, but it is in, in one way. Uh, the same year, I, I played uh, for the national team of Croatia under 16. So I was 16 years old and uh, I got the invitation that, uh, that I'm going to play Junior Fed Cup the same summer. But that year, uh, my grandpa also passed away. And uh, mm -hmm. I discovered were like two days after he died. So I think it was like, I was happy, but at the time, sad. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, but, but it, it was actually, I think, that uh, something that he would also be proud of and happy for me so I was happy in a way and other thing that I'm let's say proud and I'm happy always to remember is uh, when uh, when I came back from appendix surgery uh, I had like one and a half week but the tournament was uh, close to my home in Ball uh -huh. and uh, said like yeah I practiced like uh, 
one and a half week, like I wasn't in such a great shape. And uh, I went uh, to ITF uh, ball and I won my first doubles pro title. Nice. And I was one and a half week and I was like almost four months out because of appendix because the situation got worse and uh, I had uh, some problems more after the surgery. It was mm -hmm. already the liquids were already spread and it was a tough period but it was nice to win. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's an amazing story and sorry about the passing. Um, I know yeah. that's a tough time. And again, these are times where you really appreciate your family and you appreciate your loved ones because you realize that it could be all taken away from you in, in a matter of, of seconds. So uh, I appreciate that story. On the flip side, I want to ask you, I'm curious to know, you know, being on the tour, I know there's challenges and I'm curious to hear what some of those challenges are. But before that, do you have any funny stories of your time traveling and playing on the WTA tour? I, I have actually, uh, it was uh, on one tournament, it was combined tournament with the men's, like ITF men tour. Yeah. And one player from, uh, I think Argentina, I, I cannot actually remember from was he, but he was every day coming to my mom and asking her, can I please have the hand of your daughter? Like every day, every day, <laughs> I I was really uh, shy to to go like sports anymore. Every time he saw me or my mom, he was coming and and proposing me. So it was like a bit uncomfortable, but it was funny. So I, I take it you're you're not married because you didn't you didn't accept it, right? <laughs> I was young, but even now, a bit older, I, I wouldn't accept, like, <laughs> <laughs> so soon. Great, oh. that, that, that's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. I think it happens to the best of us, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it can also be a distraction, especially if you're, if you're playing and you're trying to focus and some guys coming up to you, like, can I have your, you know, your I'm daughter's sorry. hand in marriage? That could be yeah. hard. <laughs> um, <laughs> Now, just so in my past, I worked for Wilson. So I managed global tennis balls, tennis rackets, accessories, um, and things like that. So just being on the, you know, traveling around and doing player testing with some of, especially with a lot of the WTA players, I know the challenges of being on tour and how grueling it can be traveling from country to country or, you know, local state to local state um, to try to win. And there's a lot of pressure associated with that. Talk about some of the challenges that you face throughout your career and also how you overcome them. Well, uh, let's say when, when you are uh, practicing like as a kid, I think it's important to have like, uh, like a goal and motivation. And after that, if you are like pushing and giving your best and uh, practice, I think with practice makes perfect always. So if you are practicing, like someone sees that you are a hard worker, it will pay off any any day. So I think it, the most important thing is like if you love what you do and you put in the work, I think everything comes with that. But also in in tech, always the ones who who have better financial background, they it's easier for them to 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 go up faster. Like if you have already like as a young person, if you have a good uh, financial background you're able to travel to many many different countries that where are uh, a little bit uh, less uh, harder tournaments and you can win them more easily and you get points and you're collecting points you're just going uh, up and up on the ranking and and that's what's bringing you more sponsors and it's like that yeah no that's that's great i, I couldn't agree with you more i think in life, you know, you're either on a high or you're on a low, right? And yeah. I think there's always a lot of challenges, but how you react to those challenges is, you and, know, in my mind, the most important thing. And even if if you are not, like, if you don't succeed, I, I think in tennis, what I don't like in tennis is to hear if you're not, uh, if you didn't win Grand Slam with 21 years or 20 or if with teenage years, like you cannot succeed in tennis. No, for me, from my opinion and from my perspective, if 
you are lasting longer in tennis, it's more efficient. If you can play with 30 or 35 and still be at the high level, I think it's more better than just to succeed when you are a teenager and then you are with 22. I don't want to play tennis anymore. Like, yeah. I'm like I don't I don't like that. I think in tennis the, the ones who don't give up and who are like pushing and working hard they will succeed any any time. For sure. And I know it's a different level. I'm definitely under you, but when I was in college playing college tennis, the the number one goal I had before every match was just to have fun because I knew if I was having fun on the tennis court, one I was going to compete hard and have fun, but two, you know, it was just going to be a good thing for me. Yeah, that's true. If you if you're not loving what you are doing or you don't have fun, you're like being pushed from somebody somebody else. Like if it's not your dream or if you don't love the job what you are doing, then then it's not good. Then it's a matter of time when when you're gonna stop doing it. So absolutely, I love everything is possible. Yeah, and as you make your way back onto the court and tournaments at some point will come back i guess what's the what's the biggest thing you're looking forward to once the, the you know the wta tour comes back and itf tournaments are, are back in place well for for this year uh i was i i had big plans for this year <laughs> but okay. covid <laughs> everything is postponed yeah but not this i feel motivated and uh, but let's say for this year i was uh, aiming to go higher on my ranking both in singles and doubles and my dream was to play wta in both but it's also postponed it's, yeah. it's supposed to to take place in uh, june but it's still we don't we still don't know if there's going to be this year the tournament so i don't know like but in in the future, like in few years, I would definitely love to play uh, Grand Slam in doubles. That's my goal. That's that's a great goal. That's a great goal. And I've been to. <laughs> I've hold on, but <laughs> I wasn't complaining about any other. <laughs> I I played all the Grand Slams. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> And it's funny, so I'm reading some of the comments and one of my teammates in college, I was, I think I was telling you this, he was from P Pula, did I say it right? Yeah. yeah. And so, but the only thing I know in the language are swear words and bad words. So I, I can't read any of what's coming across the screen. I was like, oh, that might be a swear word. I, I recognize that, but I won't tell you all the funny words I, I know in Croatian. It's a Croatian thing. Wherever we go, the first thing that we teach people are the bad words. And then, like they can say it like normally and nothing will happen. Yeah. But it turns out that it's like bad words. <laughs> yeah, no, that's funny. That's yeah. funny. So I have two more questions for you. And I think there are a few questions that people have asked and I can ask you those as well. But um, for a junior coming up or someone who's probably going to see this, like, what advice would you have for, you know, a young girl or a young boy who wants to play on the WTA tour or ATP tour? Like, what would you recommend that they do and really focus on right now? Well, uh, the most important thing, as I said, if you love something and if you put in hard work, you just have to have the self-confidence and believe in yourself. Of course, to, to be around the, the positive and good people who, who are who will help you to, to reach your goal. If you are having some goal, like, like not short term, like the long term goal, and you have to stick to the plan and just practice and makes it more even better, makes it perfect. Practice makes perfect. Yeah, absolutely. That's the most important. And yeah. it's, not everyone's, uh, not everyone's uh, future should look like, I don't want to give any example of now uh, big players but not everyone has the same uh, career you don't have to be winning grand slam with 16 years or 18 years old give yourself time and just try to make every practice more better yourself like try to improve every practice absolutely and yeah of course, for the important thing uh, that i learned is physical uh, preparation that's mm. more important than the tennis. 
like if you are physically ready and if you have pray shall we say if you have air enough air in your brain and you mm -hmm. can as long as you can like if you don't get tired and you have enough air also in your lungs then you can play and if you are able to physically perform the other things are just coming automatically practice yeah that's that's very well said and i always tell my students like focus on the process like try to get better each and every day you're going to have bad days you're going to have good yeah. days but just focus on the day and and not so much i i went away from saying hey let's win this tournament to hey let's just get better today and then come into the tournament knowing you're playing well and let's see how it plays out and more than likely you know the results will come as opposed to i have to win this tournament right i was i was lucky because uh, my father was uh... He taught me the first uh, physical training. He was with me when I was a kid, like when I was 10. We started to, to do like uh, coordination stuff. And uh, he thought that running is really important, like for the air in your lungs. Uh, so I was lucky that he was with me. And uh, by now, he's still helping me with the physical preparation. Mm. So from him a lot. Yeah. Also. And how special is that to have your dad, you know, be there with you on the tennis court? Um, I think about my parents being there and I've traveled around, you know, playing junior tournaments. My dad and mom would drive me and it was a special bond we developed. So how special is that for you to have your dad with you? Usually I, I never liked uh, <laughs> my parents my practice. I don't know. Like, okay. Yeah, right. that's fair. It's not something bad, but I just didn't like like because when i'm on practice i like to focus on practice and i don't want like anyone to 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 watch it or to to say something you should do this you should be do this. because i have already like coach on the court and i think the person is uh, saying what i should do that's the first person is coach so yeah. nothing comes before coach when you are on the court and uh, but with my dad uh, it was it's really still very very funny nice because we we get along really good and uh, since he was a professional football player and uh, now he's a, pro a football coach he has a big experience he's a pro license coach and uh, he, mm. he really the sport so i'm actually really lucky that i'm still able to, to learn from him and to to work with him nice that's awesome yeah. and but as... sometimes being uh, uh, annoying and uh, he's <laughs> mad at me, but uh, yeah, it's tough sometimes because sure. it's girls, boys that yeah. are a little bit tough to work with, but <laughs> everything turns out fine, so. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so as we finish up, uh, the one thing I always like to ask, especially pro players is, you know, as you think about the future, and I think you said a little bit about this, um, just with you wanting to play um, a grand slam and doubles and singles and things like that. But as you look at the next couple of years, like what are some of your, you know, big bucket goals that you have for yourself? If you would like to share, if not, it's okay. Well, I think, I think I, I, I kind of said it already. Like okay. I don't want to too much in like, spreading it but i i would like like to to go on and play grand slams definitely that's that's my my goal like for let's say my my long-term goal nice and, yeah and yeah. i think it's always i think that's great you have that and you know what you're working towards and then you can kind of put that over there and then you can just get to work every day and then one day you'll look up and i'll look on tv and i'll be like ah oh, i remember yeah. When we talked about this. Um, so I have one wild card question. I always ask because people are watching, what's one thing that people may not know about you? So I think about myself and I'll, I'll give you an example just to help you out. So um, growing up, I had a pet dove, a bird for about 18 years. So that was the only pet my parents allowed me to have. 
And it's pretty funny because when I tell my friends, anybody, they're like, you had a pet dove? Why did you have a bird? And I would tell them it would fly around the house on my shoulder. I would come home. It would go out with me. It was like we had a special bond. So I was really sad when it passed away. But doves usually live 10 to 12 years. So I got an extra six years out of this bird. So I was curious to know if you had anything you were willing to share that people may not know. Like you're an amazing, like you make great cakes or I don't know, something. I think that they already kind of know it if they follow me. I always post what I make. So I think that they already know that. But I don't know, let's say that uh, I don't think so many people know that I'm playing tennis with the right hand, but I'm uh, left-handed. Ah. So I would say that the thing, like every other thing besides tennis, I'm left-handed, like writing, Everything is like with the left hand much easier. Where actually, I I injured my uh, left hand last week because mm -hmm. I uh, yeah I was cutting uh, avocado. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, I was cutting avocado and uh, yeah, the, the seed was uh, like really uh, let's say rotten already. So it kind of went through avocado knife, went through avocado seed and uh, through my arm. So of oh, course. No. For some days, I was uh, I was uh, practicing only one-handed backhand <laughs> and like hands, forehands, like forehands, like every day, forehands, forehands, forehands. So it was but already like okay. I I think I'm gonna prepare dinner soon, so it's it's fine. <laughs> That's awesome. So I'm actually the opposite. I play tennis left-handed, but I do the majority of things with my right hand. So I'm like the opposite way with the left hand but then my first coach was like no play with the right which is really weird I think left-handed players are more tricky on the court and I think it would be advantage but but it's okay sometimes yeah. when I sometimes when I'm running and when the rally is like really tough I switch my arms and I play with the left if I cannot reach <laughs> with the slides or backhand then I reach with the left and then they are like happening <laughs> but, yeah. that's funny what'd you say i would say that thing that people may not know about me so. that's a that's a good one that's a really good one um so i'm out of questions now <laughs> but the one thing i'll say and that i always like to say when i end is one do you have any last minute um advice for anybody listening and I think you've already given it, but I always like to ask that. And on a high note, any favorite quotes you have or something like that? Uh, well, let's say my my favorite coach would be my dad, <laughs> because probably he will see this. <laughs> or, or any other coach. I'm sorry, but I put my dad first. There you and go. then he, my first tennis coach. Uh, yeah, his name is Yasmin Likic. Um, he taught me like my first uh, tennis steps. He was a really good motivator. Uh, I have really, from many coaches, I heard that I have really good, and nice technique. So I'm thankful for that to him. And uh, yeah, with him was was really nice because I was working with him uh, till I was uh, 16. I so I had for eight years the same coach. And with him, I, I won all the national championships. Wow. I started uh, also with the first uh, ITF futures points. So it was really tough to, to move to Zagreb and uh, to start with the new coach. But yeah, so I would say definitely him and my dad. Nice. Well, I'm sure your dad's going to be very happy when he watches this. <laughs> and it's going to warm his heart. <laughs> <laughs> commenting with the heart so oh uh, okay okay so that's good you're you're in good you're in good shape so yeah. well i want to thank you so much for for jumping on and, and sharing your story um you have a great story great personality and i think you're going to be very successful in not only your tennis but whatever you choose to do as you progress through life and know that i'll be cheering from for you from the sidelines so you know you have three tickets for any Grand Slam you want. <laughs> there you go. I'm going to I'm going to hold you to that free tickets. Yes. No, no. I'm I I'm sticking to my words, so don't worry.
Okay. All right. Perfect. Well, enjoy cooking. Um, be careful with the avocado. And yeah. And I will we'll, we'll catch up soon. Thank you very much. All enjoy. right. Have bye a good bye. one. Bye. Cheers.